five months now, people in Hong Kong have been protesting for democracy and against what they perceive as a growing influence by the mainland uh, government from China. As an official from Taiwan, an island which Beijing considers a breakaway territory, uh, how do you view these protests? The breakaway was at the Neolithic age, I believe. Um, I think in Taiwan, while we're looking at Hong Kong, we're seeing the beginning of a new way of demonstration for liberal democracies that are what they call be water or leaderless movement. Uh, in our own sunflower movement, uh, which I participated, where we occupied the parliament uh, for 21 days back in 2014, we started this way of coordinating a leaderless movement. By the time, it was more like 20 leaders, but in Hong Kong, it's now like 2,000 leaders. Uh, the protests there have grown more violent in the last uh, period of time. And there is the chance that at some point Beijing says, we've had enough, we're going to intervene with force. How do you view this? I don't think that will happen on a international watch and when uh, all around the world liberal democracies are looking at it as something that must not happen. For our part, the Taiwan universities have been offering a lot of exchange programs to give the students there a safe space to have a conversation with international media precisely for this. Now, you've started writing computer code when you were a kid. Uh, you've been active as a hacker, as a computer hacker. Now you're the digital minister of Taiwan, and you're calling for the uh, reinvention of democracy. How is that supposed to look like, and how do you perceive your own role in it? Um, as a digital minister, my workspace is totally radically transparent. All the meetings that I chair, the full transcript can be found on the Internet. It's entirely published. And so by radically trusting people and making the state and how the state works transparent to the people, everybody can understand not only the why of policy, but also the why of policy making, the context of policy making. And this is as opposed to other jurisdictions, which makes the citizen transparent to the state. Um. But is there more to it when it comes to digital reinvention of democracy than just providing a bunch of papers for that matter? In Taiwan, what we're doing is we're bringing technologies to where people are instead of asking people to come to technology. And so we have universal broadband as a human right anywhere in Taiwan, even on the top of the mountain of Yushan, 4,000 meters, you have 10 megabits per second. And if you don't, it's my fault. It's very affordable, 15 euros per month, and everybody can be their own press, their own YouTuber. Everybody can just voice their opinions, and that is the foundation of liberal democracy. Because of universal broadband as a human right, we're also opening up the entire participatory budget, participatory regulation, everything on a single participation platform called join.gov.tw that has more than 10 million active users out of 23 million active residents in Taiwan. Big tech companies have played a uh, questionable role sometimes when it comes to democracy, being a platform where fake news can be spread, where voters could be influenced. What sort of role do they need to play when it comes to reinventing democracy? First of all, just like in the additional counter spam uh, issue 20 years ago, we need to establish a norm where people can very easily voluntarily uh, participate in the fact-checking community, and this is what the uh, large platform has done. But more importantly, uh, in each of our ministries, there's a team of at least five people that can roll out funny, mimetic, engineered jokes, clarifications, uh, one hour after each disinformation gets spread, so that when people look at those clarification messages, they would uh, think of something that's funny, and instead of turning anger into outrage, it will become something that people can more uh, act in a pro-social manner. And this is why uh, that we don't take down anything by the journalist. Uh, our minister's words are not higher than a journalist's words, but we contribute into fact-checking and journalism by providing real-time clarifications very quickly and also very funny way. Taiwan is also aiming to transform its economy from, an, from a manufacturing hub towards a more digitalized economy. It's been difficult to do that. What are the stumbling blocks? What are the roadblocks that you're encountering there? Well, we're doing pretty well, actually. Uh, our AI uh, strategy, which is based on the idea of AI as assistive intelligence, not artificial intelligence, enables our uh, medium and small enterprises to automate part of the work that they consider a chore to do uh, without replacing anyone's job. And this kind of co-evolution, this kind of social norm-based AI development is very attractive to like-minded economies and countries so that our unicorns uh, don't generate uh, negative externalities on the 
the society or on the environment. For example, Gogoro is at once a unicorn for sharing、uh, riding in the scooters, but also energy management and also the green energy. Rotang, thank you so much.